למשל, כמו זה מפתח הרב, 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 כמו זה מפתח يقول الله عز وجل في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم واصبروا إن الله مع الصابرين الحمد لله We praise Allah the Almighty We bear witness that nothing deserves to be worshipped except Allah and we bear witness that Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم is Allah's messenger and his slave the seal of the prophets We seek refuge with Allah from the weakness of ourselves and we bear witness that whomever Allah guides, no one can misguide them. Whomever Allah guides, no one can misguide them. We ask Allah the Almighty to bless His Messenger Muhammad والسلام, bless His companions, bless His family, all of them. Ameen. Allah mentions in His Quran, He says to us, be patient. Be patient. Allah is with those who are patient. How fast this month of Ramadan has gone? In four days, we have ten days left. It seems as if we started just a couple of days ago. And now we are moving toward the end to the last third in a few more days. Allah said, be patient. Allah is with those who are patient. Sometimes, brothers and sisters, there is a word that if you want to find the definition of that word, you can't go to a dictionary. Sabra is one of those words that you can't fully understand by just merely going to a dictionary. Yes, a dictionary will say patient. Sabra, sabra, to be patient. Yes, it says that. It, it means that. To persevere, yes. But it's more than that. So today, inshallah, in this football, I like to admonish us what Allah said to us to be patient. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, said, No one is given a greater gift or a more comprehensive gift than the gift of summer. But what is it? Hint number one. What did the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, call this month? Shahul Sabra. It is the month of patience. My question to you today, all of the ibad, the ibad that we do for Allah, whether it's fasting or praying or giving zakat, I'm asking you, is our worship an end or is it a means to an end? This is what I want to talk about today, inshallah. The Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, according to Hadith of Anas ibn Malik, an, he passed by a woman who was crying next to a grave. And he said, Wasbiri, what taqi wasbiri, what taqi wasbiri. He said to this woman, Be conscious of Allah if you would fail. Be conscious of Allah and be patient. You know what this woman said to the messenger of Allah? إِلَيْكَ عَنِّي إِلَيْكَ عَنِّي إِنَّكَ لَمْ تُصَرْ مِنْ مُصِيبَةِ وَلَمْ تَعْرِفُ Get away from me. Get away from me because you don't know, you haven't reached my calamity. You don't realize my calamity. It has never affected you. My calamity hasn't affected you and you don't know what it is. 
And the Prophet والسلام, he moved on. Someone said to her, this was, this was the Messenger of Allah. She didn't know. Oh my goodness. I, I said this to the Messenger of Allah. And so she went to his house and, and, and listened to the narration. It's very beautiful. And she found no doormen at the house, no guards. Can you imagine going to Washington, D.C.? And you want to see President Obama? And there's no guards at the door? Don't laugh, it may be like that soon. <laughs> so she went to the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, and said, I didn't recognize you. And then the Prophet said this gem. He said, Sabra is at that first stroke of news. At that first moment, you hear the news. That's patient. Not a week later, not a month later, not a year later, because most people can deal with it. A week later, a month later, a year later, they can deal with it. But that moment that it happens, at that right moment, right there, how do you respond? This is something. I'm going to ask you a question. Who was in that grave that that woman was crying? I have two answers. The first answer, the best answer to me, it doesn't matter. Whoever was in that grave, be patient. The second answer is, according to another narration, it was her baby that had died. Now, when she said that you don't know, you have never been, you experienced my calamity, you could say about Bill Gates, you don't know what it's like to be hungry. You can say that about Bill Gates, or you don't know what it's like not to live in a nice home. You can say that about Warren uh, Buffett. You can say that about other rich people. But no one can ever say anything about our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, for sure he is an example for us. How much do you know about your Prophet? Let me share a few things in case you didn't know, most of you didn't know. It is unusual for a parent to bury their children. Usually, it's the children that bury their parents. Every once in a while, you have a child that dies. How many children did our Prophet, the Lady Salat Wasalam, how many children did he have? He had seven children. Four girls and three boys. The fact of the matter is, six of his children died before he died. Six. One of them, Fatima, is the only one that lived after the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, and she died six months after her father died. Sallallahu alayhi wa You don't know my calamity? Are you, are you kidding me? Those of you who don't like the house that you live in, or those of you who got evicted from your house, you no longer have a house to live in. You think the Prophet didn't know what that's like? He had to migrate from his home in Mecca to go to Al Medina, homeless. You want to complain about being homeless? The Prophet and his companions were homeless and they left their home in Mecca, left everything in Mecca, and they went to Al Medina as refugees. You telling me you hungry? Imam, I don't have a lot of food. Are you kidding me? Read the Sirah, where the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, days went not eating food. He was so hungry, the companions were so hungry that they ate leaves from a tree. Did you ever have to eat leaves from a tree? How 
dare we complain? I remember the prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, was with his companions. And one of his daughters sent word that her son was dying, his grandson. And asked for him to come. He said, whatever Allah gives belongs to him. And whatever Allah takes belongs to him. And they sent that word back to her, and she sent word for him, please come. And the prophet noticed he took a lot of his companions with him so that they experienced. And when the daughter put his grandson in his arms, the grandson took his last breath, and the prophet began to shed tears. And one companion said, and, well, and to Ya Rasulullah, you too? What is this? He said, it's Rahmah. It's mercy. That's the grandson of the prophet dying. Dead. So what am I saying? Patience means to have an appropriate response to ever, whatever your child is. You're going to be tested. Every one of you are going to be tested. Some of you may be um, uh, 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 deported back to the homes of your ancestors. Some of you may have to go to jail. Yusuf Alayhi said that was the name. He went to jail. Some of you have to lose all of your property. But the question is, how are you going to respond? Do you know the sixth lead, the tenth leading cause of death in America is? The tenth leading cause of death in America is suicide. Every year, some 40,000 Americans take their own lives. Why? Because they can't deal with the test. Someone said that suicide is a permanent solution for a temporary problem. People think that if you commit suicide, you get away from the problem. Your problem just begins if you commit suicide. Every year, some eight, uh, 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 400,000 Americans attempt to take their own lives. Around the world, 800,000 people take their lives every year. 20 million people around the world attempt to take their lives. Patience. Sabra. Can you imagine? You're flying on a plane. I fly every week. I'm in some city, some country. Every week I'm on a plane. Can you imagine you on a plane uh, from Germany and the pilot decides to take his life? 150 people die because the pilot was tired of living. He thought that he was becoming blind and he couldn't take it anymore. So he takes his own life. Be patient. Waspiru in Allah ma'as sabirin. Be patient. Allah is with those who are patient. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. Ramadan. Shaykh Mustafa. It's amazing. I'm in the masjid every day during the year. I know the regulars. All of a sudden Ramadan comes. And everywhere you look, the masjid is packed during Ramadan. You don't see some people except in Ramadan, but that's okay. But my question is, is fasting like the other ibadah, is it an end to itself or means to an end? Is it just to accumulate these days of fasting so that on Yom al Qiyamah Allah will reward us? Yes. My answer is both of them. It's both of them. Consider this. A man came to the Prophet he wanted to know about Islam. And the Prophet said, come to Salawat, 
fill, fill young with me. Try prayers a day. And listen to what the man said. Hal alayya ganuhuna? Is there anything more than these five prayers? Kala la illa antadawwa. No, 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 except what is extra. And then the Prophet alayhi salat wa salam says, see, 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 I'm shahr Ramadan, fast in the month of Ramadan. Hal alayya ganuhu? Anything more than the fast of Ramadan? Kala la illa antadawwa. No, 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 except what is extra. And then the Prophet mentioned zakat. Hallelujah, Is there any more than this this zakat? No. Except what is extra. And the man he turned around and walked away and said, Wallahi, La Azidu Allah wala Akutsu Minu. I swear by Allah, I would not increase it or decrease from it. وَقَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ أَفْلَحَا إِنْ صَدَقَ This man will be successful if he does it. Why I mention this? Because right now, I imagine the same thing here. I know this is a business area, but I know usually during Ramadan there's more people Salat al Taraweeh, there's, 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 there's people. Qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Man sama Ramadan iman wa ahtisab in kufna lahu ma taqadra min dhabi. Whoever fasts in Ramadan with faith, seeking a reward from Allah, will have his sins forgiven. This is what we want to do. I warn you, be careful. يَقُولُ اللَّهِ عَزَّ وَجَلْ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمِنُوا قُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَسِيَامِ كَمَا قُتِبَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ Fasting is prescribed for you as it was prescribed for those who came before you that perhaps maybe Perchance, you will develop taqwa. A guarantee, maybe, you are supposed to get something from this fast. What did you get? Are you more patient? Menkama Ramadan, Iman wa Tisam, and Gufra al-Hu Matakabla al-Dabi. Whoever stands on Ramadan, Salat al-Tarawi, Salat al-Tahajjud, Qiyam al Do you have to fast Tarawi? Is it mandatory? No. No. Ila al-Tadawa. It's extra. You don't get sin if you don't do it. But if you do it, you get big reward. Some of us, and the last 10 nights are looking for Layla Tukhada. And they stay up all night. And they do ibadah all night. Searching for Layla Tukhada. Man qama Layla Tukhada imanu wa tisab in bufin aluhu ma taqadu in the deen. Whoever stands on Layla Tukhada seeking a reward from Allah. With faith and seeking a reward, Allah forgive them his sins. What am I saying in my conclusion? What does this whole football about? Go visit the prisons. Every once in a while, go visit the prisons. This is somebody in prison. A lot of Muslims in prison, by the way. A lot of Muslims in prison. Go visit the prisons. And I will show you that a lot of people are in prison because they didn't have patience. Go look in the graveyard! <coughs> you find a lot of people in the graveyard because they didn't have patience. Go look at the married men. How many wives have been divorced because they didn't have patience? How many husbands been divorced because the wives they didn't have patience? Ooh. We have become a people of quitters. Oh, 
always quitting. Man go to school and he quits. Man get a job and he quits. A person get a position and they quit. Person go to school, learn the Quran and they quit. I was in the airport, Reagan Airport, one year. During the month of Ramadan, I'm sitting down in the airport at my gate reading the Quran. A man come next to me. He looked at me and said, is that the Quran? I said, yes. He said, I used to read the Quran. He said, is this the month of Ramadan? I said, yes. Are you fasting? I said, yes. He said, I used to fast. And then he said, I used to be a Muslim. So I closed my Quran and I began to talk with him. I said, why? Why do you leave Islam? Because there are some people that are so impatient that they'll leave Islam. I pray that it never happens. That we die as a Muslim. He said, I'll never forget this. He said, I became angry at Allah. You became angry at Allah. He had a trial, a test. He failed the test. And I sat there, brothers and sisters, until they called my, my plane, and I have to board the plane. I got up and said, you know what? My plane is about to leave. I have to get on the plane. He said to me, I work here, and that plane can't take off unless I say, sit down. <laughs> so I sat down. And started because I felt he needed it. And started teaching him. Allah knows this day if he came back. I think he did. Allah knows best. I saw the softness as I began to talk with him and, and the softness. Finally, look to the prisons, look to the hospitals, look to the marriages, look to the hellfire. And how many people in the hellfire? Because they lack patience. Be patient. I like to end with a marvelous um, picture of patience. I believe that the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him, was the most patient of us. When you study his trials, I won't go through all of them, but he bore those trials and got great rewards from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But right now, I like to talk about what I consider the finest hour of Abu Bakr. The son of Ali عن, asked him, who is the best person after the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him? He said, Abu Bakr. And then he said, after Abu Bakr, Ali said, Umar. I'd like to take two moments to talk about Umar and Abu Bakr and what I believe Abu Bakr's finest hour. I said to you earlier that patience is at that first shock. If you look at all of the companions, perhaps the most pragmatic, the most um, level-headed, Ummah, the Lord. We have a little debate here and there, but he was level-headed. When the Prophet died, alayhi salat wa salam, cool Umar lost it. He took out a sword and said, Wallahi, ma mata Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I swear by Allah, the Prophet is not dead. Umar, the one who is pragmatic, the one who's cool under pressure, Umar lost it. Here comes Abu Bakr, and he learns the death of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him. He goes to Aisha's house, and there the Prophet lay dead, and he uncovers the Prophet, and he kisses him, and said, Ya Rasulullah, you are beautiful in life and beautiful in death. Who was 
question of Allah. Yeah, yeah. But you don't forget that was his boyhood friend, his best friend. Friends from the very beginning. And the Prophet, peace and blessed be upon him, said, if I had taken a Khalil other than Allah, it would have been Abu Bakr. But he is my brother and my companion. And then now, in the midst of this, Umar standing up with a sword, menacing, Abu Bakr comes and says, don't be in a hurry, O Uthi. So, Umar sits down, and in, the, in his finest hour, Abu Bakr gives the speech of his life. Hamidah, Allahu Abu Bakr. Abu Bakr praised Allah and said, Allah, Yes, whoever worship Muhammad, Muhammad is dead. But whoever worship Allah, Allah is alive and Allah never dies. And then he quoted the Quran, إِنَّكَ مَيِّتُ إِنَّهُمْ مَيِّتُ You, Muhammad, shall die. And they shall die. And then Abu Bakr, he quoted an ayat from the Quran. I ask you before I sit, how many times is the name of Muhammad mentioned in the Quran? Musa is mentioned in the Quran 136 times. Jesus is mentioned in the Quran 25 times. How many times is Muhammad mentioned by name in the Quran? Four times. And Abu Bakr, he quoted one of them. أَعُوذُ بِاللَّهِ مِنَ الشَّيْطَانِ الرَّجِيمِ وَمَا مُحَمِّدٌ لِلَا رَسُولِ قَدْ قَلَتْ مِنْ قَبْلِ رُسُولِ أَفَإِمَّا تَعْقُتِلًا قَلَبْتُمْ عَلَىٰ قَابِكُمْ Muhammad is only a messenger. Messengers have died before. If he dies or if he is slain, would you turn back your heels? Some people, they turn back their heels when the Prophet died, some of them, because of that great test. It was a big test for them. Oh what test is, could be bigger than the death of the Prophet, peace and blessing be upon him? And that was Abu Bakr's finest hour and the people that began to weep. Be patient. No soul can die except by the permission of Allah. It's written in the book. So if your brother die, your sister die, your mother die, your father die, the imam die, the scholars die, all of them die. Okay, mashallah, we cry and we feel sad, but we don't say anything except for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So brothers and sisters, last point I want to make, don't forget this. You should be happy the 16 days you fasted, be happy, yes. Be happy. But don't be taken for granted that you will get rewarded on your Kiyama until that day come. What's my evidence? The evidence is the Prophet asked his companions, do you know what a Muflis is? A Muflis is a person who become bankrupt. They had wealth and they lost it. He said the one who don't have any, any uh, they don't have no money. The Prophet said that Muflis is a person who will come on Yom Qiyamah with Salat and Siyam and Zakat. You have it, you get it. Allah bless me, Shaykh Mustafa, alhamdulillah. Now, when I understood about Islam, I became a Muslim, a real Muslim, began to practice 40 years ago. Now I fasted for 40 years, alhamdulillah. I, when I understood, that I have to make salat. Sallu kanara aitu muni to salli. I used to pray, but not like the Prophet, because I didn't know. I called myself a Muslim, I didn't know. But when I learned, I began to pray like the Muslim, like the Prophet, that they said, now I've made um, over 73,000 prayers, alhamdulillah. 
Once I understood Allah blessed me to make four pilgrimage to Mecca. Alhamdulillah. But I'm saying to you, I ain't like, okay, I did it, I'm okay now, I can rest now, I did my siyam, I did. no, 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 no. Because I don't want to be a muflis. What is a mus muflis? A person will come, Yom Kama, all these years of fasting, all these years of salat, all these years of zakat, all of that. But they would uh, curse a person, slander another person, take the wealth of another person, shed the blood of another person, and beat someone. Allah will take their good deeds. Those days that you fasted in Ramadan, all the Qiyamulay, all of the Tarawi, all of that, Allah will take that and give it to the person that you slandered. Are you crazy? You're like a person with a bag of gold and there's a hole in your bag. And as you're walking with your bag of gold, the gold is slipping out of your bag until you have nothing left. And if Allah takes all your good deeds and give it to the person that you shed their blood, you stole their wealth. If you don't have no more good deeds, Allah will take their bad deeds and throw it on you and then throw you in the hellfire. Are you crazy? I ain't fasting for nobody but me. I ain't making salat for nobody but me. I refuse to give you my ibadah. So your ibadah are chips that you will use on your Qiyamah. May Allah bless you to keep your chips. We ask Allah the Almighty to forgive us our sins and have mercy upon us. We ask Allah the Almighty to accept our fasting, all of it. Every prostration we made, all of it. Every ruku that we made, all of it. We ask Allah to bless us every idol of the Quran that we read for Him. Every word we read for Him, may Allah bless it and give us reward for it. We ask Allah the Almighty to bless our wealth, to give for Him, for His sake. May Allah bless it and accept it from us. Amen. We ask Allah the Almighty to bless the Muslims who struggle all over the world. Amen. Please, oh Allah, help the Muslims in Palestine. Amen. Help the Muslims in Syria. Amen. Help the Muslims in Afghanistan. Help the Muslims in Iraq. Amen. Help the Muslims in every part of the globe. In Somalia. In everywhere. In Burma. Amen. Everywhere we ask Allah to help them. Help the oppressed. Amen. ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت سميع عليم ربنا لا تعاخرنا نسينا طعنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إسرائيل كما حملت طول بينا من قبلنا ربنا لا تحملنا ما لا توقع تعلن نعبة وفر عنا وفلنا وحمنا وعنت مولانا فنسونا على الكامل كافيين والحمد لله رب العالمين بقامة الصلاة